With 2022 in full effect and new players joining steadily, now is a great time to introduce 22 tips and tricks for Crossout in 2022. If you haven't already watched last year's tips and tricks video, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And with that being said, let's jump right into it. This time I'll start off with some garage menu items and then we'll finish off with some gameplay tips and tricks. Tip number one. When you are first greeted with the Crossout Garage menu, it can be a lot to take in. So one thing I encourage new players to do is to hover over anything and everything you see. This will often provide you with additional information. There are hidden details like this scattered throughout these menus, so try it out and see what you can find. Number two. There's no question that Crossout is a fun game to grind, but sadly, the background music is not much to get excited about. So I recommend shutting it off completely. Just go to the settings menu, click on the audio tab, and move the music slider all the way to the left. And while you're here, you might as well do the same for the speech volume, since it really just gets in the way of the sounds that matter in the game. Now this might look a little different depending on what platform you are using, but if you enter the chat menu here and open up this small cog, there's a whole bunch of settings that you can change, including turning on a general chat feed, and there's even a channel for rookies. How nice of them. With so many players looking for quick ways to earn coins and resources, there are several daily challenges I wanted to highlight. The Craft Any Part Challenge can easily be completed by crafting common medium wheels. And then for the Buy or Sell an Item on the Market Challenge, you can sell these very same wheels. Another option for this last challenge is to buy a stack of 10 coupons. They are super cheap and quick buying them won't really make a difference. Tip number five. Have you ever found yourself wondering what these little food coupons are for? Well, they're actually part of the requirements needed to upgrade your co-drivers. And just so you know, there are actually four levels within each co-driver. The first level is free to unlock as long as you build up enough reputation points. And the remaining three are where the coupons come into play. Tip number six. Sharing a custom build in the exhibition is a great way to express your creativity, but it doesn't have to stop there. Your garage test area can also be shared with other players as well. Just go to your profile, make sure you're on the debriefing tab, and use this drop down menu here to send a link to your friends. You can also submit your garage to the exhibition by using the ranges tab and choosing save blueprint. Number seven. Building a vehicle from scratch can feel overwhelming when you are new to the game's controls, so I recommend turning on the help menu here. It will display what each function does and help you to get more familiar with the building process. Here's an additional building tip for you. When mounting weapons on your build, there are two methods that work best. One is the cabin itself, and the other is to mount them on parts that feature a 90% damage pass-through. These include buggy parts, gun mounts, and all frame parts. Here's one last building tip for you. When mounting items with blast damage, placement does matter. The damage output of a blast is directly related to the surface area that faces your cabin, so keep that in mind when you're deciding the layout of your next build. Moving on to some storage tips, eventually your inventory space is going to fill up, and one way to free up some room is to salvage items. Typically, you are better off trying to sell an item but at least now you know it's an option. Along these same lines, you can also upgrade items, which is commonly known as fusing. A few parts that I would highly recommend fusing are the R2 Chill and the RN Seal. Both of these parts will automatically get an increase to their cooling efficiency without risking multiple fuses, and they work well with machine guns and lots of other weapons. Tip number 12. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to control the weather or even time itself? Well, in Crossout you can. Just go to your profile, select the Garage tab, and right near the bottom of the screen you can change your day from dawn to dusk in a matter of seconds. How crazy is that? Number 13. Once you have access to the Crossout market, there are a lot of opportunities to make some free coins. And one way to ensure you're getting a good deal is by watching my market guide for 2022. I bet you saw that coming, right? And if that doesn't interest you, then you can always sort the market listings by return on investment. The higher the percentage, the better the deal. 
Now let's move on to some gameplay tips and tricks. At the beginning of every PvP match, you have about 10 seconds before the game starts. Rather than idly waiting for the match to start, try to take note of things, such as who is on each team, how many bots are there versus how many real players. The map and game mode itself can provide you with the plan even before the game begins. Don't be a mope, take some notes, you're welcome. Every so often in a PvP match, you will come across a teammate that scores significantly higher than everyone else. So naturally, you might be thinking, I wonder what build they're using. Well, just ask. If you right click their name, you can send them a direct message and ask for a link to their build on the exhibition if it's available. I've actually found a couple solid builds by using this method. Tip number 16. When engaging an opponent, you will notice there are two different colors of damage numbers. The white numbers indicate damage to structural parts, and the yellow numbers mean you are shooting vulnerable areas. These parts include generators, cabins, and any item with explosion damage. Focusing your fire on these parts will ensure that you're inflicting the most damage. When playing any raid, each player has one free repair kit that they can use in the event they are destroyed. If it happens a second time, you will have to use a repair kit to continue playing. Depending on the market value of resources and some other factors, using repair kits means you might actually be losing money. So my suggestion is to try to avoid using them if you can help it. In case you didn't know, faction flags are a great way to increase the amount of reputation you earn from each match. The problem is they tend to get in the way of your view. One way to remedy this problem is by attaching it directly to a detonating module. You can then break off the flag at the start of a match and you will still earn a reputation bonus. Now that is a solid trick. Did you know you actually have a handbrake? It's true, and stopping on a dime at the last second comes in handy much more often than you might think. On PC, you press spacebar to activate it, and for console, it should be L1 or LB. Try it, apply it, you're welcome. Tip number 20. Your minimap is a crucial piece of gameplay strategy, but it does have some limitations. If you already watched my 21 tips and tricks video, then you know your minimap should be set to large, but you can take this one step further. By pressing tab on PC or start button on console, you can quickly see the entire map, which will help you identify where your teammates are and figure out who needs your help the most. Tip number 21 is something I don't think anyone has ever talked about until now. In the event you or one of your teammates flips over during a match, a common reaction is to spam the help button. The problem is this icon typically means that you need help fighting an opponent, and in turn, this will override the icon to show that you have flipped over. So instead, I suggest that you do nothing and just wait it out. If you're fortunate enough, a teammate will spot you and give you a hand. And finally, tip number 22 is to support other crossout content creators. Now, you most likely are familiar with ones like Mr. G and JB Ryder, but there are a lot of other creators out there making solid content, such as Neely Bobber, Dirky Dirk, Sharknado, and dangerously incompetent, just to name a few. Liking their videos, subscribing to their channel, or giving feedback through commenting all plays a part in supporting the work they do and gives content creators motivation to keep going. Well, that my friends will wrap up 22 tips and tricks for Crossout in 2022. I really hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if any of these tips helped you out in some way. Other than that, I'll see you here next time on Crossout Basics.